G'day folks, um, today we've got something a little bit different and, and really cool, we're both a bit excited about this one. We don't often get the chance to do a range review. No. Um, we, we get a tool, we might get two, impact driver or drill, sure. and we talk to that and straight away we get questions of what about that and what about that and what about that. With the nail guns, it's, a, it's also really important. If you're going to jump on board and look at a framer, you're going to want to know what the DA's like. Yep. You know, or the stapler or bratter. So really, really cool today that we get to round out, other than the 16 gauge, but it's so similar it's not funny, to the 15 gauge, um, we get to round out a bit about these guns. Yeah, yeah. And um, we're just going to talk first generally about these guns. We've got the yep. framer up front and centre at the moment. We think that's probably the most important tool in the range. Yep. It's the one that's going to bring people across. I think so. Especially chippies. Yep. Um, so the main uh, feature and um, talking point for DeWalt nail guns is the fact that they use a flywheel mechanism mm. to deliver their power. Yep. The ramp um, up. So um, other tools like your good old Hasload, obviously it's got an explosive gas um, release each time. Yeah. Um, other brands of cordless um, battery nail guns have like a compressed air system inside. Um, which punch hard yep. um, and don't have a ramp up. Yep. The DeWalt has a flywheel mechanism that has a ramp up, so you have a little delay yep. before you can pull your trigger. Yes. Um, that system has some pros and some cons that you need to know about. Yep. Uh, the, the con is obvious. You have to wait until it finishes ramping up to be able to pull the trigger. Yep. I think, more, what is it, maybe a second and a half or, or 1.2? At least maybe. one and a half, all the thought, yeah. Okay, something like that. Um, which can be annoying. Yep. No doubt about it. Um, I'll talk about ways to mitigate it up later, but yep. But there are also some pros. Firstly, it, these guns are very light compared to their battery contemporaries. It is, and you wouldn't have thought just hey, they got a slightly different system that there could be a weight change so dramatic, but in the framer in particular, yep. it's very noticeable, especially it's not nose heavy whatsoever. No. You pick that sucker up and the weight is going directly down, yep. it's impressive. So it has to have something to do with their system, which they run all across here, except for this stapler, it's, which we'll check that. Yeah, it's it's not only a little bit lighter, but it's just much more well balanced yep. than other battery guns. Yes. Um, so we've been really impressed with that. The other thing is the flywheel mechanism is quiet. It is. Really quiet. Yeah, well the actual flywheel mechanism is not, but the, the overall punch of the gun, the flywheel. Right. The, when you nail it, ah, sure. you notice a difference. Goes, yeah, yeah, but yep. the actual punch, the bit that's going to hurt your ears if yeah. you have your earmuffs on. Yep. Is going to be They've managed much to get it down, haven't they? Really, and I'm really guilty of not putting my earmuffs on enough. A lot. I've been using the Pazlo recently, and sometimes I fire off a, a nail a bit close to my head and just go, oh, yeah. hitting that is so loud. Not good. Butchering my ears. Um, I should have my earmuffs on all the time. <coughs> this one, that never happens. It is. No. You should wear your earmuffs still. Yep. No doubt. Yep. But if you don't, this one won't make you suffer. Yeah, cool. Yeah, you haven't got punched in the ear all of a sudden. No, that's right. No, it is a visible difference. Sorry, a, a real audible difference. So, yeah, that's right. So they're, they're quiet and they're light. Yep. But they have the ramp up. Yes. Now, to counter the ramp up, ramp up what you can do is you can put them into, um, uh, what's it called? Like a the speed Sequ uh, Not scheduled mode. Bump Rapid fire. fire. Bump, Bump fire. fire mode. Yep. Um, and you can pull the trigger before you get to your workpiece. Yep. So that you've already ramped it up. Yep. And all you have to do is then depress your, your nose yep. into your piece and you get instant fire. Yep. So in some cases, once you got used to it, there's no delay anymore. No. Um, in other cases, like if you've got a piece that's wiggling in your yep. other hand, yep. it's a pain in the butt. Like if you've got a stub that's five mil too short yeah. and you just want to fire it off on the angle, that's a pain. It is. Um, I think that, yeah, like you say, you're used to it now and you're okay with it. I get really frustrated with the ramp up still. But you, you're the one that's got this in your in your ute daily. The DA, you use them regularly. Yeah. So for new users, you're going to have to get used to it. If you want to try it, yeah. if you're going to go this way, you've just got to get used to it. You do. And Very. there are plenty of um, framers around yep. who use it as their primary stick-building gun. Yep. Um, and are used to it, fully used to it. Yeah, I think you'll get used to it. So um, just talking through this gun a little bit, a couple of really nice things we've already spoken about. Um, I also, I really like the hook. But I'm a lefty, so as you've got that gun there, 9045 timber, absolutely no dramas. Hooks in really easy for a lefty. Yep. It's very rare that a gun would be optimised for a left hand. <laughs> um, for a right hander, unless it's just your nail belt with it, that's okay. You can't easily hang this on a on a lump of timber. It jams it and then it wants to spin and fall off. Yeah. So it's just to be interesting. I thought it's a tough hook, 
Yeah. But for lefties, absolute gold. Bang straight in or yeah. hang up on something. Um, so I've that's all, a bit of a... I've almost always got mine on my belt, so I don't, I don't care. Yeah, so it doesn't worry you. Yep. The other thing is you fold the back around to the front. It actually covers speed one, speed two, yep. and you bump fire or not. But right. Well, not it's really a power level one too, isn't it? Uh, true. It's the that's speed true. of the um, flywheel yes. uh, RPM, but it's... Uh, it's 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 related to power. That's true. How much power it gives you. You'll actually hear the difference. This is one. And now across to two. Yeah. You actually hear it there where it ramps up more on two. So LVLs or if, if you're skewing, we have it on two. We're using now. Like we're using now. We've got 90s in at the moment. Absolutely. Um, anti jam there. So flick that. And actually, if your pin does get jammed, yeah. I tried to jam this sucker to see how that worked. Couldn't jam it, which was actually pretty annoying. So, uh, but that's a great thing. The only downside I would say is this: is I want some sharper points on it. I mm. I don't think a frame you're ever looking for. Oh, please don't mark it. If you are that, they've got a no mark tip you can shove on it. But I want a really nice sharp point. The bottom ones are ish; they're sharpish. This is flat though. Mm. I want something that's pretty gnarly, or just about tear my kneecap open. To be honest. Yeah. So you can whack it in, and the thing's not going to slide, especially with skewing. It's yep. probably the only thing I can pick out of it. The depth adjuster is really cool. I'm surprised because other framers I've used, depth adjuster, eh, well, you thought you put one on that's going to work and it's crap. And that goes for the whole range. Absolutely. The depth adjustment on all the DeWalt front nailers yep. are fine and intuitive and easy to read what you're doing. Very surprised. I'll talk about a bit more of the narrow crown later, but sure. I'm stunned uh, and I think it's I think it's important to note that they've done a cracking job on it. I would love it if it had a bigger rack on it to carry more nails, but then you've spoken to Chippy to go, don't care, not not an issue. So maybe I'm just a bit of a sook. Well, yeah, I've always got some spare in my, in my nail bag anyway, and I do like that I can stand it up on the battery and it's not an excessively long unit. Yeah, that's true. So that's the DCN 692. Yep. Uh, I really like that gun, it was nice. Yeah, absolutely. All right, um, the, I guess the natural um, follow-up to the framer is your finish gun. Yes. Your 15 gauge or, yep. or your 16 gauge. We don't have the 16 here. Yep. But uh, the 15 gauge finish nail is um, a beautiful tool. Yep. I really like using it. I had the 16 gauge for a long time until it got nicked. I will now be keeping this in my ute. Um, it's light, it's com comfortable to use. I've yep. you know built some um, Cypress picket gates and things like that with yep. it. Um, it, it's really, really nice to use. Um, the one downside for me is that when you push your stripper nails through or pull it out to change, yep. um, there's a little tab um, at the bottom mm. of the of the rack that holds them tight. That holds them tight, and yeah, it's hard to get past. Yep. So if you're um, taking your 30s out, 32s out, yeah. put 64s in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it, it's a bit frustrating. I have to use a knife or a spare nail or something to get it the rest of the way through. Yep. And out. Um, all the DeWalt nail guns have a um, a nail uh, rail um, spring mechanism that stays down. Yep. So some systems are a pull down like this all yep. the way. Others, um, you just pull. Um, you have to. It doesn't lock. You pull it down and then you release it again. Yeah, right. So this is the type that locks at the bottom. Yep. Um, much like your Pazlo. Yeah, okay. Yeah, cool. Um, so, yeah, really, really nice gun with that one caveat that I'm not super impressed about. Cool, but you get a free pencil sharpener on it. Which is useless because it's for round pencils. Okay, well, I tried to give you something. <laughs> um, one thing I want to chat about is the, the safety, the nose piece here. It's quite a hard plastic in neoprene type thing, mm. which is great for no marking. Sure. What I would like is to have it a little more rubberized on the skew. Um, I actually had that slip quite a few times. Oh, yeah. And I'm not using it every day like you are. And it's funny how a different tool, you just, you don't feel quite right. Yeah. So, <coughs> I would like it a bit more rubberized, but they'll, they'll wear out quicker then, so maybe it's for good reason. On the side, you also get another couple of uh, tips here, which yep. is pretty cool. One funny thing I found with, well, users, I don't care that much about LEDs on tools, mm -hmm. but I find it funny that the LEDs are down the back here. They're pretty much at the back door yep. of your car. Why they wouldn't have them up the front here? You were talking about maybe damage. I yeah. Don't know, but on all of them, they're all down here. I just find it a little bit it is strange, no. odd. It um, is. But that is a tidy gun. I'm not a massive fan of the angled DAs. I like the straight 16s. Sure. That's what I use a lot. It's what I've got on the shelf. Yeah. Um, but that's it's pretty sweet. But the, the, the tip is the only thing that I could um, sort of pick on as such to mm. say... I reckon it needs a softer tip. I notice all these guns have uh, spare, two spare 
yeah. um, tips on on the tool ready to be replaced. Which, and I actually tried to knock them off deliberately before yeah. to see if you would lose them, yeah. and I couldn't just accidentally knock them off. Now, interesting, you make that point. That is cool that they put a couple in there because stuff and tool companies, I know that for inventory it's really hard, but that thing probably costs about three cents to make. Yeah. Yes, by the time you ship it, it should cost a dollar. I'll guarantee it probably cost you five bucks to get a tip yeah. and three months because tool stores can't get up a big enough order to order you a tip because you've lost your tip. Yeah. So that's actually pretty cool that they provide to and let's, they're stuck on their tight. Let's talk about those. Cool. All right, so that's your, which one is that? That's actually your narrow crown stapler. Yep, and then you go to stapler. Yep. <laughs> this is a really nice tool. I've worked in caravan industry um, and I find this a sweet tool. Narrow crown staplers you use heaps with finish ply, Luan ply, that sort of thing. And the thing that is, is critical for me is nice and light. Now, they're certainly not small. No. They're, they're not small compared to an air. But I picked it up having used air one stacks in the 18 gauge pinner and also the narrow crown saber, and I didn't find it offensive whatsoever. No, because they're nice and light. The bulk is, you know, going to be annoying in some little spots. Yeah, some tiny spots. But yep. that's the price you pay. All the battery, all the battery ones are like that. Correct. For five hundred and twenty bucks, um, I think that's actually a sweet little narrow crown stapler. Mm. Um, what I will say is, and we spoke about it before, yep. because of the depth adjustment being really good across all these guns, mm. that is my main thing for the narrow crown because you punch too far into that ply. You got a massive job to clean up. Mm. That is a very, very sweet tool, and I'm, I'm ultimately surprised that I love that so much. I really mm. am. Yep. And, and it just it does the job. I think as you go down in size and, and gauge, I think that ramp up is less of a problem too. Ah, oh, true. I didn't even think about it. With it's those. certainly the, the biggest time you notice it is on your frame. Yep. You're right. So, and again, we talk about uh, runtime. Don't even think about runtime nah. because yeah. you run them on two amp hour bats all day. I reckon. Yeah. Um, we are never doing a stinking runtime test on these. No. Um, that's a sweet little tool. Got bump fire, also got the single, and they've both got cool little hooks in there. Yep. So um, that's nice. And the 18 gauge pinner, I love 18 gauge pin brads. Yep. Braders, very, very sweet and not too heavy. No, and we don't want to labour on every tool and say how much we love them because they are um, all very similar. They all. That is true. Except for these last two. Oh, that's true. You're talking about that one. Um, so this one, the electrician stapler, it may look a little bit different by the time this video is released. Yeah, yeah, because this is like a pre-production model. Yep, at the time of filming right now, this is the only one in Australia. Okay. Um, so this is for your cables. So your power cable, your lighting cables. Yeah. Also, we'll do coax and your Cat5 type data cables. Sure. The main... Not as well. It's really <coughs> made for the power cables, isn't made it? Made for the power cable, 100%. Yep. And you can tell that because on the nose piece here, is nice and rectangle that depresses down there against your work piece yep. and then this little safety here that actually depresses down onto the cable that's right so you can't fire this without it being around the cable no it, no. it will not fire no you tried it earlier it just won't go yeah so um that's a super sweet light unit uh five five nineties i think we'll put the price up for you sure but i spoke to three sparkies couple of them are absolutely raging about this and are really keen for it yep. because of the speed lay their cable and just go bang and keep walking along yeah. and instead of these little ones with a hand and you're tapping them in yeah. one of the guys went eh, maybe not so much for me because he likes his cable really tight and doesn't want it sagging whatsoever or being able to move mm -hmm. we are not sparkies we don't purport to be sparkies maybe there's a reason why you need a tiny bit of movement i don't know yeah. but that story will be told when it's out if you've got this gun and you love it and you're a sparky please comment let us know that'd be great so we'll start off with 1.5 cable. That actually went pretty good. So this one is 2.5 mil cable. It's not bad actually. It went in the, to the pine heaps better than it did the hardwood. The hardwood struggled, it didn't go in as deep, and the cable was like, wasn't as like hard up against the wood. Every now and then a tool brand produces a tool that has all the other brand users going, well, I need to get on there now just because of that one tool. Yeah. And this is one of them. Could be one of them, you absolutely. Might, you might be on one of the other brands and go, well, now I've got DeWalt batteries because 
I need that stapler. Yeah. Electric, electrical stapler. Yeah. And um, we think it's a cracking idea. They're the only ones who do it. Yep. We don't know if this thicker handle is going to change to the same as all the others. It's odd because all DeWalt tools have this beautiful slim handle. Yeah. That's a fat boy. It is. Um, maybe just as a pre-production pre kind of post could be unit. Yep, um, absolutely could be. But the last one is this monstrous concrete nailer. Um, now we're going to keep this brief because this is not our bread and butter at all. No, we don't, haven't had any opportunity to get into a high rise or a multi-story building. And, yep. You know, it's made for firing up pins into the ceiling. Yep. With the donuts, the hanging wire ties, things yep. like that. Um, we had no opportunity to do it. We tried. Yep. Um, so we've got a little bit of footage of firing some stuff into your your slab outside. Yep. That's also that's the channel, your jib rock yep. channel, they call it, uh, for your stud fr steel stud frames, that sort of stuff. Sure. Uh, we shot them down with those pins. There's three different styles of pins available. Yep. Can't find black ones, um, black plastic one, uh, plastic coated ones in Australia. But there's the yellow and there's the red. The yellow is for standard concrete. The red is for hard. They're called XH. Okay. Um, and you can you can drop those down into that channel. This thing though, it it does its job and it punches hard, mm. but it is quiet. Yeah. It's, it's like only a couple of decibels above the. Framer. Yeah, it's really quiet. That's a concrete nailer. Nothing like you used to with you know the actual explosive rounds. Yeah. No. Um, having said that, for all the chippies watching us, this is not a replacement for dropping um, your bottom plates down. Putting your bottom plates into slabs. No. It, it, that's, it's made for smaller pins. Yep. They do actually go quite long. What are they? Oh, 57. Do? 57. Yep. Um, but yeah, that's that's not what it's made for. No. It's not for. To Definitely not. Bottom plates. Now, funnily enough, if you look on some other reviews, and we're not wrong, but you look at some other reviews and go. Oh, yeah, they've got this fixing and that fixing. DeWalt Australia seemed to say, no, no, we want this for concrete yeah. and a bit of steel. Yeah, grab that, that piece. They're not talking about all the insulation type fixings that Americans seem to have. Yeah. So we haven't got the multiple heads, we haven't got the different fixings. What we've got is the donuts, and it works well. Also works in my exposed hardwood beams. Yeah. Um, now, when we're doing donuts up underneath multi level type concrete, so. You strap the drill, uh, strap the drill, strap the, drill? Strap the gun into here, yeah. and you've got a couple of poles you screw on, and you straight up, you run a laser and just go ping and drop all your donuts in the roof. Yeah. You said before, all day, every day, be stuffed if I'll be doing it all day, because um, it'll get heavy, but you're pinging them, you're not up a ladder and up on scaffolding. So that thing's a cracker. The red will want to get out and show you this thing on site. Yeah. So if you're thinking that's your business, get onto DeWald, it's a banger unit. Um, they will come out and see you um, and, and show it off. It's very, very impressive. Yeah, we'll wrap it up with that because we haven't used it enough to know just how good of a job it is. Unfortunately not. Um, the uh, overall feeling that we often get from people in our comments is, sure, it's light, it's you know ergonomic, whatever the latest features are, Yep. but does it last a long time on the site? Is it reliable? Yeah, longevity is not something we can speak to easily because we are reviewing these new tools right now. That's right. If we waited the 12, 18 months, you're going to go, nice job, boys, you, you're about a year and a half late to the party. Yes. What we can say is that you've been using a couple of these main guns yep. for a while and they are really impressive. Yeah, that's right. So, um, yeah, to the chippy who goes, is it as reliable as the Paslo or something? I can't give you that answer. Yeah. I'm sorry that there are others around who will have done a, a long-term review on the Gen 1 or the Gen 2 framer, for instance. Yep. Um, but the Gen 3 is going to be better. Yes. So even those faults that the, the previous models have are not going to be there anymore in this one for the most part. You've also got people who use tools very different. And I'll tell you now from the comments that we also get, you got brand specific people. They couldn't give a stuff what we're saying right now. Yeah. They are going to stick with Paslo. There's other people that go, I'm Jack of the Paz load. Yep. This has been great for me. Yep. So you've got to take this sort of stuff with a grain of salt a bit. Yep. Some people use tools very different to others. And sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. So we're relying on our viewers, most of all. I mean, we talk to our, our, our friends or our, our traders and use them every day as much as we can. Yep. But please head down in the comments and tell us how these guns are going for you. Yeah. Is it reliable? Is it your go-to or is it just a backup? Yep. Tell us how you're using the guns, if yeah. you're happy with the price point and the value that it's providing to yep. your business. Yep, absolutely. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Facebook as well. Uh, Instagram, we're there all day, every day, ready to answer questions. Um, send us videos, good or bad, of your tools. Absolutely. Thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it. Bye.